we were talking about the qualifications of becoming a geologist. And it was very important to me to promote that field because we have so many kids that are graduating from college, they got massive student loans, and they can't find a job. Now, obviously, we can't do anything about that particular situation, but you know, as, as it stands now. But what we want to do is catch the people that are going into college, catch the individuals that are pursuing uh, career uh, objectives and maybe don't know what they want to do. A lot of times when you enter into college, you just do general education because you're not sure where you want to go. So this field, this in, in the field of geology and mining, this is something that we need. We There's, there's a huge demand. So I just kind of want you to expound on that and then you'll be able to pay your college loan back. Well, and I think we need to catch kids before they get to college. That's right. We need to catch them in, in grade school. In grade school. And, and you need to capture them. Because eight years is not that right. long off. you, you got to capture the kids that are interested and have an aptitude and a desire to learn math and science. Okay. The, the basic uh, understanding and a good basis of math and science is critical. So, so kids that graduate from high school that haven't had... Uh, advanced algebra and trigonometry and geometry and physics and chemistry, those aren't our target kids. We want kids that have studied this, that are good at it, that then can be uh, groomed or mentored in college to study the right the right subjects. So it's going to take them uh, a minimum of a bachelor's degree in geology or engineering and I have a master's degree. If they want to really uh, uh, advance in the business and they're probably going to at some point have to go to graduate school and get a master's degree in geology or an MBA or a master's degree in engineering to, to really be able to move up in the corporate ladder and responsibility in these companies. Now, why do you think this is not something that's being promoted? We don't have images. We don't, we don't see people, you know, trying to uh, offer uh, this as an option. I mean, look, there's no media here. People are not, you know, it's like the whole country is being dummied down. Mm -hmm. You know, th this, can, this is your future. This is something that can sustain your life, sustain your family. Why isn't this field promoted enough? Well, it's a small niche, you know, it's it's a small industry. And until the last seven or eight years, we, commodities as a whole, oil and gas, gold, copper, uh, potash, you probably don't even know what potash is. It's agricultural mineral essential to grow crops. Well, when you say potash, you know what I started thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, why I wanted to be quiet and let you explain it. <laughs> so, so all these things were not in gr great demand, and prices were 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 down. And so, what we see, it's a contrarian industry. And when financial services are ruling Wall Street, commodities have generally been down. Now we are in a super cycle, a 20 to 25 year secular bull market for commodities. We are uh, eight years into that right now, it started in 2003 more or less. So we're eight years into this, so we, we know there's an, uh, probably another 10 to 15 to 20 years to go in this secular bull market where commodities will be in demand and it really has to do with the growing middle class in Asia demanding electricity demanding cars the world's our oyster now we have the internet you know I can I can get on my phone and send a text to my buddies working in China right now and they have it in, in two seconds and so what that has done with television and the internet, it's let all the people in the world that want to be upwardly mobile, they want to be like us. They want to be consumers. They want to get into their BMW and turn on, and they want to walk into their house and turn on lights. You know, most of the people in the world still don't have electricity. Did you know that? I and did you, not and know you, that. And you, two thirds of the world doesn't have the ability to switch on a light and and get electricity. So from that point of view, 
they there becomes this giant demand for copper because you can't build electrical line without, without copper. copper. I mean, wow. you know about this right now, all these people, all these hoodlums that are walking around and, and stealing copper wires. P I, it, Pookie and Ray Ray. Yeah, Pookie and Ray Ray are out there <laughs> stealing <laughs> copper wire. Read in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch this morning, a guy's electrocuted because he broke into a substation in, in St. Louis and gets electrocuted trying to steal copper wire. Well, that just tells you the demand for copper, and that's coming from China and India for the most part. People there want electricity. They want to turn on switch, turn on light, a, a switch, and get electricity. They don't want to live in the dark for 12 hours a day. And, and that's who the could problem. blame them? That's the problem. So many people are in the dark. They're in the dark psychologically. Right. In the dark. Now, there's been a lot of talk here at the expo about um, companies and mining and, and various businesses that are happening overseas. What's going on in our country? We live in the United States. So can you just kind of expound on the mining companies here in the United States? I mean, we have gold, we have silver, we have copper here in our country. It may be hard to find, you know, but a geologist like yourself knows where to dig. Well, uh, we have vast resources in this country, but over the last 20 years, we've given away our, our mining industry, much as the way we did our, our oil and gas industry in the 70s and 80s. In the 90s and 2000s, we gave away our mining industry. And a lot of that has to do with the difficulty of developing mines here, because we have the NIMBY crowd, not in my backyard crowd, and the, and the banana crowd that build absolutely nothing anywhere near any crowd and they they <laughs> continuously try to stop mining development well, what that has has done is it's made us dependent for most of our mineral resources in this country. We have lots of copper, but yet we're still a net importer of copper. We have all the natural gas in the world, yet we, we because we can't develop infrastructure, we are unable to, to tap our natural re, uh, gas resources and convert from from an oil-based economy more into a natural gas-based economy. So we have these difficulties in this country that have prevented us from being self-sufficient. So more and more we're dependent on unstable, geopolitically risky, or unfriendly governments in the world for our mineral commodities, just as we are dependent on unfriendly parts of the world for our, for it's our oil. It's mind control. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's not teaching people to be self-sufficient and independent and to look within. So many people in our country, you know, when it, like when a natural disaster, we're, we're depending on the government. We're looking outward for help. And they're not going to help us. Well, and they haven't. And a good example is Hurricane Katrina. Exactly. And who who solved that problem? It wasn't FEMA. It wasn't the federal government. It was it was like guys like Richard Dez. You know what Richard Dez, who's hosting this show, you know what he did at, during Hurricane Katrina? Tell us. He loaded up his pickup, hauled his boat down to New Orleans, and was rescuing people himself. There's a whole contingent of people from the Midwest. Individual. People got together. And they saved New Orleans. They saved the people in New Orleans. It wasn't the federal I'm government. I'm so glad you said that because Delise Williams, my camera <laughs> operator, her husband, who's the king of house music, Farley Jack Master Funk, loaded up his truck and took food and supplies right. down to, to New Orleans. And, and that's what it's going to take in our country. For we have to collectively help each other as citizens. Well, and, and we do that. And, and the problem is we become too dependent on government yeah. to take to be our safety net. Honey, that and, government and, cheese is nasty. You don't want none of that. You want the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really the goodness of people's of, of people, you know. Right. And it's generally the goodness of people with money or who are willing to give money. So so capitalism rules in our country as it should and those people are naturally giving. You know, we don't need government handouts. We do, we need to be self-sufficient and use our fellow man and their goodness for for our safety net and the guy that, that most eloquently expresses this, in my opinion, is Ron Paul. And he says, we don't need all these government handouts That's because right. people are generous. And, you know, exactly. well, nobody wants to see his fellow man down in the dumps. We want to help people. But they, want, they need to want to be helped and to help themselves. Well, Mickey, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. 
This has been very educational, and I am so appreciative of your time. And we'll be right back after this. This is the fabulous Mother Diva. I'm at the Chicago Resource Expo. Lunch is over with now. They had a wonderful panel discussion. Everybody was going back and forth. And I was so excited to see this young man. You know, Kids Corner is a show about children, and we have a lot of adults that watch us as well. But to see this young man, this child, who is here, his name is Colin, and this is his father, Keith. And from my understanding, this is his fourth year coming to this expo. So apparently your father is obviously into gold and silver, so you grew up in a yes. household uh, that promote gold and silver. Yes, no. So. Mm -hmm. Just just walk us through, you know, how old, tell us how old you are. I'm 13. Okay. I've just started in getting into stocks this year. I have an app, I have one stock, I'm investing in Apple, and I am also thinking about other stocks, like, when you say graphene, I'm thinking, yeah, there's this new technology for, they're using um, graphene to make faster computers. Okay. Graphite is called graphene and it's like one atom thick of graphite. So I believe if they start using that, graphite will start to go up. Graphite so that stocks. means Facebook and Twitter will act faster? Yeah, probably <laughs> computers and computer chips and memory. Well, okay. More storage of memory. Exactly. And um, gold and silver are obviously going up, like they've been saying. I don't know where they are anymore. But they're the, they were. Um, I've been coming here for four or three years, I don't know. So, like, you've been coming here for, like, three or four years. Yeah. So, when you first started coming, coming, were you really soaking up what people were saying, or were you like, I wish I was somewhere else playing a video game, my father makes me come? I mean, was, what was your attitude? when you? I was just like, hmm, I wonder what they do here, since I really hadn't known much ideas from them, what they did here, and it's like, Oh, you get free stuff. It's kind of interesting, but then I got more into it. I um, I told my dad to invest in some stocks like premium, and he got how much? Oh, he got money out of it. Yeah. That went from how did you know what to do? To I don't know. Cents. That's just how do you, look. Like. The Bible says, "Out of the mouth of the babes, the children are the next generation." This young man is a genius. Told his father what to do. And it all worked out. That's amazing. I didn't know. I just thought they had good um, stocks. And then I said another one, which my dad didn't like. And then later they went up, but he had invested in them. It was a rare earth one. Was it Tasman? Tasman, I think. Yeah, yeah. Tasman. And then they went up, and he didn't invest in them. I'm like, I told you so. This is Keith. This is. Colin's father, aren't you just so proud of your son? Oh, very much so. Uh, do, aren't, do you wish you would have listened to him? <laughs> yeah, and another case in point, last Monday, or Sunday, Colin said that uh, Yahoo was looking good. I taught him a little bit about uh, P.E. ratios, and a low P.E. ratio is a good thing in a stock company, and Colin noted that uh, Yahoo's P.E. was around 13 or 14, which is very low. And he said we should buy that. And I, you know, hold off. You just can't buy everything. But this week it was up 10 to 15 percent. His PE is now 17. PE is 17. So he pays attention. He's learning, and I wish I could do everything. So what? What? Did, what are your goals for the future? Do you want to be like a stockbroker or a geologist? You want to get into mining? I mean, what? What is it that um, you want to do? I want to be a pyrotechnician. I want to blow stuff up. That would be fun. Which could go into. <laughs> It could go into mining, like drilling and blasting, okay. and um, my dad used to be a blast driver, so he would drive dynamite all over Canada. Okay. And, uh... But he's talked about going to MIT. Yeah, uh, which, electronics is important in pyrotechnics. I believe you could do anything. You're amazing. Nanotechnology is interesting. I did a I search, which is like a big um, presentation on nanotechnology after I saw Anova on PBS, all about making stuff smaller and nanotechnology. That's where I got the you no. Know, I saw one called making stuff smarter, which is the graphene thing. And there's stuff about silicon because. They've start like they've hit a roadblock in silicon, so they've started to make silicon chips with silicon going up instead of it flat, like columns, small tiny columns of nano-sized columns of silicon, so they can make 
computers even faster and hold more data because once you get um, silicon too close, it starts to not work and it starts um, malfunctioning and not working properly. So with the columns, I can get them more closely together in a smaller space and then it will be more efficient and more um, faster. So that means Yahoo, Facebook, yes. Twitter, your video yes. games, everything will be working faster. Yes. The stuff that kids love. Yes. So you're like our spokesperson, you know, for the children for this segment because you, you're, you're a young person. And I just kind of want you, you know, in closing, to give some advice out to some of the young kids your age that are watching why this, these types of expos and this gold and silver and all of the precious metals you mentioned, why they're important and why should someone your age be interested in that? Well, they're important because you can make a lot of money off of them and you can get, if you start investing in stocks, you can get a good job. Like if you become a stockbroker, you can get like, if you get a bunch of people in being their stockbroker, you can get like a hundred dollars per trade, and you might get if you're like a big stock tr trader, you can get like over a thousand dollars a day. Or if you're another stock trader, you can like a day trader, you you can make money every single day, depending on whether the stocks go up and down. You just choose a stock, and then you if it, it you sell it at the end of the day, and hopefully it makes money, and you're educated to know what will go up and what will go down. And investing in metals, well. And you can invest in metals now at your yes, age. You can. You don't have to be like 21 or over yeah. or 18 or over. I have it's a something that you can do now, yeah. and you're only 13. Yeah, I have a huge what's it called a, it's a custody account. Yeah, so. custody account okay. from stock trading. Yeah. yeah. So I'm. So is that part of his allowance money? <laughs> well, he, he gets his allowance, but he saves his own money. He's worked uh, babysitting jobs and birthday gifts and all that. So he put the. We transfer money into a custody account at a brokerage firm, and uh, he's he started to buy. He's yeah. saving for university. This is so important because so many children, you know, they expect their parents to do everything for them. And, and you know, kids see stuff in the store. They want those Air Jordans. They want that nice outfit. They're looking at Lady Gaga and Beyonce and Justin Bieber, and they want to be like that. And it's important as adults and parents to share this information because it's like if this is your goal and this is what you want, then here's a way for you to earn your own money mm -hmm. to be able to enjoy that stuff without breaking your parents' pocket. Right. And Colin saved his money last year and bought a used iPod. Um, but now he's... You hear that, kids? He bought a used iPod, okay? <laughs> right. He is not caught up in the advertisement. But what's what's smarter is that now he owns a share of, of Apple. Wow! And now that share has gone up uh, fifty bucks since yeah, he bought, bought it. it yeah. So you know, and that's only three or four months. So hopefully the stocks will keep going up. You'll buy other stocks. I yeah. hope you'll buy some that he's learned about today. And then he, he might be able to buy a new iPod, uh, iPod or iPhone or something. But it's with money that he earned through investing in stocks. And it, buy an apple and you'll be able to afford apple wow. and like with the ipod that i got i got it off craigslist and the new ipods that were coming out were like 220 dollars i got this one for 120 dollars the only difference didn't have a microphone or a camera and like i don't need that you can live without a microphone or a camera in your ipod but by buying this used ipod it was beneficial yes. to you in and terms of stock. And you, yes, and I saved a lot of money on, and, unless I got a used iPod, which I would have had to save up longer. I mean, a not used iPod, I would have saved a lot of money, and I just would have gotten a couple more features compared to a used iPod, which is an older version, which I saved $100, and then that led me to get interested in stocks, as the stock act that came on my iPod, like, and that's what got me really interested in stocks. So now I check the stocks like daily, and that's like Apple. Like that's what got me into Apple, and we saw Yahoo and a lot of others. Now it's interesting that we're talking about Apple because you know, well, I, everybody has a time and a place. And Steve Jobs, who um, was obviously the Apple guy, is what they call him. Mm -hmm. He took off the flesh. He passed away. So. 
since that has happened, um, what do you see the future of Apple and actually what what did it cause? Did the stocks go up? Did they go down? I mean, what happened, you know, as a result of him passing away? They went down, but now they're going up again. Okay. They're, I think they're at the highest they've ever been. They're at 422, is it? Something? 422, yeah. and that's the highest they've ever been, I think. So, and they're still going up, I believe. And in the last couple of days, they've gone up $10, $8 a day, a lot a day. And even though stuff, Steve Jobs has died, They've gone up, so I believe their new CEO that they might elect, that they he or she might help them. I don't know who's, is it, who's the CEO, or do they have a CEO? I don't remember the name. There's okay. an acting guy in charge. Okay, I believe he um, is helping Apple a lot, at least because the stocks are still going up, okay. even though Steve Jobs has died. So how do you see the future of Apple? I see the future in Apple. Um them becoming a monopoly and then it might this might this might happen way in the future but they might have to be broken up like Microsoft like did they might go down but they'll still be one of the top dogs in technology mm -hmm. and but there will be a constant battle between Microsoft and Apple well there's been a battle between yes, Microsoft and, and Apple still will go on. and Google Google will be in there as well mm -hmm. Google is a big player wow well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us here at Kids Corner and on the Mother Diva Show. This is our future, a young child, just genius. I'm going to be calling him. He's going to help me with this show. He's going to help me make some money because I'm going to be calling this young man out of the mouth of babes. This is what we're talking about. The children are our future, and you all need to see a, a person like this, this young man. He's a genius. He's brilliant. He's here at the Chicago Resource Expo. He's been coming here since he was nine. He's 13. It's time for you all to wake up. Because, you know, Lady Gaga and Beyonce and Jay-Z, honey, they can't do nothing for you. Okay, it's time for you all to get it together, open up your minds, elevate your mind, and start investing and looking into your future. And we'll be right back. What's well, spell me your name? Colin. Thank you I am so Colin. much, sweetheart. Oh my God, that was wonderful. Keep, thank you so much. <laughs>